Okay, we can start. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, sorry, good, good afternoon. I was carried away by the morning session. Good afternoon. Welcome to the uh, session D in the parallel session, new business creation. I'm happy to <clears throat> see all the uh, participants, the, the paper presenters, as well as the audience. And we will be presenting three papers at the moment. Uh, my name is Rocky Adiguna. I'm a lecturer at the University of Gajah Mada, Indonesia, in the Faculty of Economics and Business. Also, I'm the secretary of IUNBE. So I've been also working together with uh, the LSU in preparing the conference, which is, um, this is a historical conference for IUNBE. This is the first, and you are among the history that um, we record at the moment. And in this session, we will be discussing about new business creation. Um, as I mentioned, there are three papers, uh, one uh, authored by uh, my co-author, Fabrian, and me. So I will be also part of the, the, the order here. So I hope, um, yeah, we can still manage the discussion. And then we have a paper by McRae, Pandalipe, and then we have a paper by Marlo Novino. So we can uh, start the video now for the presentation and then we can open a Q&A session, discussion, comments for maybe about 15 minutes to 20 minutes per, per, per paper. All right, so thank you. Um, yeah, uh, I was co-authoring with my co-author, uh, Fabrian, now Fabrian is joining here. So the topic is on, on family business and in contrast with the title of this session, which is more about new business creation, this one is more as a continuation of business, not so much uh, the newness, but more as a continuation. But yeah, I'm looking forward for your thoughts and comments about this uh, study in this paper. So please from the audience or from the other presenters, any thoughts and comments? You can freely open your mic or raise your hand. Yeah, please, McRae. Uh, yes, good afternoon, uh, Pak Febrian and uh, Pak Rocky. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, presentation. And uh, I think if you're saying that uh, if your presentation is uh, not really more on uh, new business creation, I think you had, you had you added perspective on the on that, uh, particularly in terms of uh, how you deal with the uh, innovation to vote addition. And uh, I think uh, I would. In your, I wonder in, during your during your uh, data gathering uh, in this uh, for these uh, three enterprises, uh, are there or are they open to really innovate their tradition traditional processes? Because uh, I think uh, since you mentioned about innovation to tradition, uh, it is also uh, for since we're dealing with the family business, uh, the familiness of uh, some SMEs uh, in your country. Is uh, are these families really uh, or demonstrate uh, openness to uh, innovate their their traditional practices? Mm -hmm. Thank you, McRae. So I will allow uh, Fabian. Would you like to comment on this? Whether they are open for innovation? Okay. Um, thank you, um, Mr. McRae. Uh, can you hear me? This is clear, yeah. Okay, um, I think uh, innovation is not about the uh, future because uh, uh, in in our study is uh, uh, it's about the past time and uh, uh, now time and the future time because uh, uh, all the family business in, in in our study is is not a uh, new 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 business because uh, it's. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Business with the uh, have a long time and uh, have long story because have uh, if, if they uh, have have uh, 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 can uh, uh, pick one uh, uh, case in uh, Lily Taylor in the Lily Taylor is uh, is have three time uh, have uh, have uh, <clears throat> a bad times because uh, have. Uh, constructing with the business and have a uh, bad condition with the their financial is about uh, from from past time and give uh, some uh, suggestion from the founders i think that what it 
Mr. Farouk. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to add to add on Fabian, uh, what's unique about these cases is that they it's not so much about innovating in terms of um, I just say making a breakthrough innovation. So they are they are what what makes them unique more as they 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 try to preserve the old way of doing things and they can survive with that. And to me, yeah, in, in contrast with this uh, uh, mainstream uh, message about innovation that we have to 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 be new and, and futuristic, perhaps it is by being old. At least on the in the Batik case, by being old, they are able to preserve their position by staying true to their heritage, to passing down this heritage, to maintain the authenticity, originality. So that that uniquely creates, yeah, uh, um, their competitiveness, if we if we can use that word. So that's that's yeah, that is quite in contrast with the message that we usually hear that we need to change everything and, and transform everything to the new form. Yeah. Okay. So I see Marlo, please Marlo, if you would like to add. Hi. Um. Good afternoon. I have. Uh. Well, this is just a clarification. Because uh, upon uh, listening to the presentation, uh, you have adopted actually the resource-based view as a theoretical lens in understanding how family business establish and orchestrate familyness in, in your case. Uh, I just would like to clarify if those uh, five dimensions that you have um, identified later part in the findings, uh, legacy, um, and among others, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, are, are those uh, also the resources now uh, based on the resource-based view. Mm-hmm. Okay, thanks, Marlo. Fabian? Okay, um, well, um, our study based on resource-based view on uh, 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 J. Barney in 1991, and after that, in 1999, uh, Heberson have a, a, a special resource in the family business in the, their research. It's about feminineness. If if we see the uh, Barney study in the 1991, it's about the uh, resource, but intangible resource, like like that intangible resource in the G Barney. But intangible resource in the family business is special. It's not not uh, not the brand, it's not uh, not people, but it's it's about the feminineness. Feminineness make it special in in that business. I, I think that Mr. Rock. Yeah, Fabrian. But do you think these uh, five dimensions uh, can be seen as resource? Uh, I think uh, I think yes, but okay, because uh, all all resource should be uh, uh, orchestrated with each other, and all resource is blend in 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 one uh, concept in the the company. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Pak Fabian and uh, Pak Rocky, I think. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I think that would be one of the uh, one of the most in, one of the interesting uh, directions of future research mm-hmm. to understand the intangible resources. Since you're already discussing right. the resource based view, the, there are so many uh, and uh, these intangible uh, resources uh, of for family businesses are the ones that doesn't are not that are those that are not really recorded in the accounting books, and uh, but these are the ones that really adds value. Uh, on the on businesses, whether they are you know whether they are in whatever form, whether they're owned by family or by corporates, and uh, I think it's all uh, the tradition and also the uh, and also the legacy that gets imported for the for past many years uh, for many years is something that people would want to patronize because uh, because the products that they have recognized uh, before are the same uh, are the same uh, because you are the same brands or are the same experiences that they have right now and uh, these are all intangible and uh, that's the, one of the uh, one of the exciting field for research, research mm-hmm. uh, resource resource based view studies on family businesses yeah yeah thank you mccray and also marlo yeah i would i would like also to add and, and in contrast once again in contrast to the new business creation uh, topic where um we don't have structure we don't have history yet in this case um um, uniqueness can also like it can be also be a, be a burden. It is not easy to change uh, what has been established from especially especially from uh, several generations. To make new things, it's a challenge for family businesses. So we can see those dimensions um, 
Although, for example, they have this uh, way of ownership of the family, usually they, they pass on uh, through the, um, the will of the parents and it has been going like that. And they have the brands and when they want to change, it becomes a problem, uh, which is both hands. I mean, it can be unique uh, for them, but also it, it's uh, like a prison for them to that uh, restricts them to go out from the, the tradition, we call it. So yeah, it is. It is. A, a, I would say two sides uh, of those things. It can be a, a good thing, or be can it can be it can inhibit uh, innovation. So yeah. Yeah, because uh, because uh, I'm actually I'm actually watching a uh, uh, a series. Uh, it's called mm -hmm. the Recipe of Life. Uh, it talks. About, it actually talks about the the uh, master who has uh, who has uh, handed down. Uh, mm -hmm. Eight recipes of a uh, of a uh, traditional Chinese banquet, and uh, and uh, then this uh, and one of one of them who inherited the the restaurant uh, mm -hmm. has a son who is actually interested in photography and uh, not really into culinary into cooking, but due to a lot of circumstances, uh, he has he was left with no other choice but to also master the art of cooking. Because if they want to really uh, save the business from uh, being eaten up by the competition, <laughs> is, it, is it available on Netflix? I would like to watch that. Oh, okay. uh, you can watch it through Me Watch. It's uh, from Singapore. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Just write down the, the title of the of the uh, series. I would like to see yeah. that. Mm, it's recipe of life. Okay, recipe of life, right? Okay. <laughs> from the audience, any comments here? Please. Um, Contribute some some thoughts to us so we can improve. Was there any any experience you would like to share related to the topic? Okay, so it seems like they are still warming up. So maybe we can move on to the next uh, paper. Yeah, we can pull all the discussion later. All right. Thank you so much, McRae, for recording the video. I know it can be awkward to record ourselves. But um, yeah, let's let's discuss. Interesting. Well, when I when I watch this video, what is uh, strikes me as interesting is the your your choice to compare between the Philippines and the Southeast Asian uh, region, and maybe you can expand elaborate a little, a little bit more why why you select the region. Not usually we do comparison country by country. You do it uh, as a region versus Philippines. Any any reason in, in doing that? Uh, I think uh, I just wanted to gain perspectives on uh, how uh, how entrepreneur or how individuals, particularly in Southeast Asia, uh, would like to or uh, would uh, or what motivates them to pursue or to become entrepreneurs. Um, just as you see, uh, the the mod the binary outcome model of the logistic regression does uh, does not really actually indicate that a person. Uh, does it engages in entrepreneurship uh, for for these reasons? Just that because of the data that was made available, we can uh, we can see that the binary outcome, which is considered to be latent one, does not really does not really. Uh, we have to look into the the indirect effects of other variables that would that would actually uh, trigger them or that would. Uh, Increase their probability of an individual to become an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. and uh, also the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor uh, was able to gather data from this uh, from this four from these five countries. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would probably I would uh, probably be interested also in uh, in in looking for in looking for the individual nuances of. On the, or the nuances of each individual countries mm -hmm. uh, as I further this research. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. something that I would like to work on. Mm -hmm. So is this is this part of your uh, PhD research and you um, some of those are your portfolio? Uh, no, no. Uh, okay. This is this uh, paper is uh, this paper I said well I submitted this paper in a mm -hmm. in a course uh, in a course in microeconometrics. Uh, ah. Yes uh, my Actually, that co that course, uh, I I failed that three times, <laughs> and oh, on my third okay. take, and on my third take, I uh, well, I think that I passed. So, but uh, this is actually one of the uh, one of the reasons, or it's very this paper is very special to me because uh, uh, it uh, it it uh, it is a uh, fulfillment of uh, my desire to really you know to really mm. uh, understand 
how the, the science of microeconometrics is and uh, mm -hmm. it just happened that I got the data uh, I got the data from from entrepreneurship which also uh, be of interest to me because I'm now working on uh, on a dissertation on e economics of digitalization and mm -hmm. perhaps entrepreneurs would consider would want to uh, also consider or impute in, uh, innovation digitalization of their businesses especially in the new normal of uh, of uh, how we do businesses yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. thank you McCray. Marlo, would you like to have some comments? Uh, all right. Okay. Hi, um, Sir McRae. Uh, yes. You know what? While listening to your presentation, I was actually browsing my notes because I just had my econometrics class. I think <laughs> the other term with uh, Dean Tess. And I had to go over with some of the notes just to verify. Uh, well, Sir McRae was mentioning about goodness of that model. I wonder... Uh, is he using the chi square something like that? But anyway, uh, my my question is because um, I, I I I read somewhere uh, that human capital may have other proxies or may uh, may other have uh, may may other have dimensions such as uh, not just literacy rate but uh, this may uh, also contain measures like um, uh, life expectancy or yung yung health. Or nutrition, something like that. I wonder why uh, you did not uh, chose those uh, other uh, dimensions as measures of uh, human capital. Mm. Apparently, uh, thank you for that question, Marlo. Uh, apparently, the the global entrepreneurship monitor um, uh, does not capture the the data for data for life expectancy and all those uh, variables. It just so happened that when uh, when Lim Actually, Pakraki and uh, Pak Fibrian, uh, one of my, one of the base papers of one of my base articles for this study is uh, one from Indonesia as well, uh, from Lim. Uh, he studied he studied uh, Indo Indonesia uh, Indonesia also, and uh, based on the gem data, it is apparent that the measure of human capital, the, the most uh, practical measure of human capital which is available in GEM is the uh, whether the individual was able was able to uh, complete post secondary education or or did settle only for you know uh, just settled for secondary education. So that that alone would be uh, the prop the most avail uh, the most suitable proxy because that's the only one available in the GEM. That's for thank you. That's uh, my reply for you, Marlo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Maybe you can share to us your uh, data set for the gem later part. <laughs> I don't know. No worries. I can I can share the link. I can I can share the link. I think the most the mm -hmm. most available one now is uh, the, the one in 2017. All right. Uh, 2017. Because uh, yes, because uh, the global entrepreneurship monitor does not really you know it doesn't really release the data right away as soon as the survey is completed. Mm -hmm. It's right. only available to members and uh, the, the, the release of the data is embargoed uh, until the three years after the completion of the survey. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, noted. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sir Macri. Right, um, right. So your data set is based on um, uh, which year? Uh, this one is in 2015. 15 yes. only. So all uh -huh. across 2015, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So I intend to rework this perhaps using the 2017 data. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. One of the, the limitations with Gem is really that uh, the proxy is quite limited. As, as you mentioned, the the human capital um, we we have the education level, but yeah, that's about it. I mean, uh, quite limited uh, data on that aspect. And what I see is that it, it is interesting that you found uh, it is regard for Philippine the Philippines context. It is regardless of the education, so it doesn't affect much on the entrepreneurship level. So, and, and you compare with the, with the, with the Southeast Asian, I mean, how, how, how's your reaction when you found out that this is uh, the case? Actually, I was, when I found out that uh, that was the case, I, it's, I find it easy for me to conclude that, yeah, maybe because, uh, because uh, in the Philippines is, since, uh, you know, for, for example, our, our, GDP per capita is not really that high compared to uh, uh, to other countries, and so we really have to find ways of augmenting. Uh, most of the households here are, and most of the households here really have to find other sources of uh, of uh, income and for them to build and protect their wealth. So uh, it is also noteworthy that uh, the 
the most Filipinos uh, would really utilize whatever resource they have, they have, and also their their creativity mindset and resourcefulness, which basically I call as madiskarte. Uh, they really have to they really have to use them in, and tap their uh, tap whatever resource they have and even the skills mm -hmm. and whatever technologies they have so that they can uh, they can uh, create or put up businesses whether formal or informal to mm -hmm. augment uh, to really uh, uh, to help them achieve their help, help them achieve their objectives especially in financial terms yeah yeah i think this is interesting i mean i would i would expect that uh, some maybe some part of indonesia would would have the same how to say uh, result uh, i mean once again indonesia is a very big country but maybe some regions uh, um, maybe if if it's it's more if if education is not the answer then it should be something else right uh, that affects the entrepreneurship uh, let's say uh, characteristics and i think this will become interesting to to explore which areas could explain the entrepreneurship level of uh, a region or a country. So yeah, I'm, I'm curious how, how we can proceed from that point. I, I agree. I agree to that, uh, Pakrafi. So might as well. Uh, I would probably uh, uh, ask, or you know, it would be a, a, an interesting thing to to want to actually create a. Uh, separate models for each country mm -hmm. as well, and also look into more than just looking at the Southeast Asia economy as a whole. You can also look at into the, if you are, you know, if the researcher is, uh, you know, he has really lacked a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of uh, time and resources here, maybe he could also look, in, he or she could look into also the, uh, the our, our, our counterparts in Asia and even in the world because, uh, uh, you, you you need not worry about uh, gem because uh, since it's global yeah. in perspective, so you have many yeah. you have many countries to study. True, true. Uh, <laughs> cross cross country comparison will be very interesting. Exactly, yeah. I would agree to that. Yeah, Fabrian, would you like to have comments? Uh, maybe I want to uh, tell about uh, you know uh, inequality in 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 uh, in the, 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 this research because uh, I think uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, I think I think uh, inequality in, in family in in nation is reverse to uh, individuals human capital because uh, if if we uh, have a, a lower class middle class and upper class is is not same start uh, for uh, education for the, if they start businesses is, is not same uh, not same because yeah you know in high class and uh, or middle class have access in the uh, capital for banks and they have a uh, uh, home to the house of asset in, and in the lower class they they not have uh, uh, asset and they they not have access in the capital for mm -hmm. banks or anything but and you can tell me all yeah but how inequality in uh, individual human capital uh, uh, apa refers to uh, start the uh, entrepreneurs or sort of business. Yeah, thanks Thank for you. that. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that, uh, Pak Fabrian. Uh, I think it, in to answer or to in response to that comment or question, um, I think it also really depends on the policy or on the economic policy of your of each uh, government. Uh, maybe. Uh, you probably need to look into the development plan of your respective of your respective countries. Uh, in the Philippines, we're looking into the development plan to see how how uh, the government really puts a premium or prioritizes uh, these uh, entrepreneurial activities and how uh, how what support does the government uh, can provide to aspiring and also to the uh, to the current entrepreneurs to foster this culture uh, entrepreneurial culture in the country. So. It uh, it is imperative also to for us to see how the government how the on top of the policy perspective we also look as to uh, up as to how the the your respective uh, government agencies would actually and even their engagement with the private sector would provide uh, an enabling environment for entrepreneurs to thrive in uh, in your respect in your respective countries. So that uh, this will actually uh, form uh, be embedded as part of the 
human capital development as well because I think in the Philippines, uh, the building the entrepreneurial mindset is already part of the uh, senior high school program in the Philipp in in uh, under the K to twelve under the K to twelve uh, system here in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So if that uh, mindset is already inculcated even during the formative years or the schooling years, then uh, we could probably and and if the government has provide an enabling mechanism or environment that uh, that will encourage people to pursue or to become entrepreneurs then i uh, it will be uh, a good uh, a good uh, way for for everyone to you know to to just really you know and to enter into this field right <laughs> right 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 so, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, McRae. Any comments from the audience? Any thoughts? Please feel free to raise your hand or open your mic. Uh, we would like to uh, get as much as possible input from you. And yeah, I just want to also uh, give you my hunch. Uh, if if human capital is not the answer, I'm, I'm, my my hypothesis would be the social capital. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if there is a proxy of social capital in G, uh, the GAM uh, more, uh, data set. I don't know. But usually there's also literature really, uh, that says that social capital do uh, enhance uh, entrepreneurship. Yeah, I think that would be a, that would be a nice uh, suggestion for the GEM, for the Global Entrepreneurship Pointer to imp uh, impute uh, uh, variables for social capital. If uh, how how uh, in entrepreneurs collaborate or you know establish networks with uh, one another, yeah, especially with the government, the public uh, public sector, or how well they are versed in social media, because social media can also uh, be a tool for advancing social capital as well. So uh, there might it might be a, a good recommendation for the GEM to up, update their uh, instrument in, in conducting the survey to the entrepreneurs worldwide. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Marlo, please. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to add something about uh, the suggestion on social capital, because mm -hmm. I did also a, a study in one of my, um, well, this was just a requirement in one of the mm -hmm. courses I had. Um, I explored on the entrepreneurial intention of um, academic entrepreneurs in a single university. And one of the dimensions that I explored on is actually the subjective norms or how social capital in general or social pressures would uh, somehow influence entrepreneurial intention. But um, um, unfortunately in my study, although I, it was just a, probably that's the, that's the one of the limitations of the study because I conducted that in a single university in Mindanao, which is Southern most uh, island of the country. Because uh, banking also on the entrepreneurial mindset that Sir Macri was mentioning earlier. Because um, I observed, because originally I'm from Mindanao. And um, th the one thing that's the prevailing culture in Mindanao is that um, entrepreneurial intention is very, very challenging in our part. Because most of, most of the younger populations in Mindanao, they would want to, you know, just... Uh, finish their, their studies in a, in a university in Mindanao and mm -hmm. go to bigger cities like Cebu or Manila and find uh, greener opportunities there. So that's our case in, in Mindanao. So it, it's very, very challenging. And surprisingly, on, on that study on um, um, entrepreneur intention, um, so subjective norms or, or the social factors, family, friends, um, even colleagues, uh, did not actually predict uh, that entrepreneurial intention. So, but uh, well, I listed that as, as one of the uh, uh, recommendations for future study to to look into the other, you know, context, not just in 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 our, in our case in, in Mindanao Island. So I just like to to also share uh, my experience on 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 entrepreneurial intention and and social capital. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that, thank you very much for that, Marlon. That would be uh, that would be an interesting study, also, especially if uh, if we're going to concentrate on the Philippine setting, then we can probably uh, come up with the uh, with this uh, with the study that that uh, captures the nuances for the three major islands in the Philippines. Yeah, I agree. I agree. The geographic clustering. Yes, yes, because it uh, because the geographic clustering also somehow defines the culture and uh, yes. the, the the mindset of uh, and which basically affects the the culture of entrepreneurship from these three major islands. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Thank you, McRae, for the response. Also, Marlo for the inputs. Sure. Okay. 
I'm, I'm opening again now to all our audience. Yes, please. Please, please, do. <laughs> please yes, let please. us give your give me your thoughts so we can we can uh, add something. We can add value to our research. Anyone would be very much welcome. Okay, so it seems that the engine is not yet <laughs> starting from them. All right, so. Um, maybe we can move on to the next to Marlowe's paper. Richard, we can switch to the next. Thank you, McRae. We can give a big applause to McRae Bonalipe. Thank, Thank you. you. Now that ends my presentation. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Marlowe, with a very interesting uh, topic. And I'm, I'm curious, what is the, how do you um, come up with this idea and how uh, you will proceed from here? Will you publish this to a journal or have you submitted this to a journal? Um, well, this was a, a course requirement in our ethics class, uh, mm -hmm. I think last term. So since, well, to be honest, uh, since Dean Sarial is my, my teacher now for okay. the quantity research methods and well, she really <laughs> encouraged her students to really join the AUN. But okay. uh, ideally, I was originally contemplating on, on the idea that uh, maybe I, uh, um, I will submit this to, uh, to, to certain journals like the LSU Business Economics Review or the mm -hmm. SPPR and other related uh, journals for, for possible uh, publications. Um, well, the main reason why I, I, I um, explored this is uh, be before uh, pursuing my PhD, uh, I, I was the advisor of the NTREP 197 classes mm. uh, starting 2014 in my home university in MSU IIT. And uh, for me personally, because I'm also a product of that um, course, I, I, I had my undergraduate um, in, in that university. So personally, I, I also mm. experienced th this particular course, the NTREP 197. Back then, uh, our perspective was like more of, you know, the traditional business approach of sole proprietorship and things like that. So our mindset was more of business operations, like how are we going to go about with the day-to-day -day business operations for like a sem, a semester that's mm -hmm. in, in the Philippines is around, in my university, that's around five months. Mm -hmm. And then when I joined the university as, as, uh, as uh, their faculty member, I was this. I have this in mind that uh, why not try to encourage my students now to consider social entrepreneurship? Because, uh, well, the, the mere fact that Mindanao is, uh, well, as I mentioned earlier, Mindanao is uh, it's, it's located southern part of, of the Philippines, and as you may know, uh, we have a lot of our unique problems in Mindanao. Um, there's a lot of inequalities there and stuff like that. So. Uh, it came to um, it came to my uh, to my mind why not expose my students to this uh, social entrepreneurship and starting with uh, the entrep one in seven practicum course and uh, surprisingly uh, some of them actually adopted the the, the concept uh, starting 2014 they were adopting or they were uh, targeting some of the uh, organized communities in in Mindanao and who were having specialized skills or some of them, they have specialized products and they tap them and they help them in terms of how to go about with, uh, you know, improving the business process, improving the, the products and, and helping them out and, and in, 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 especially in, in, in selling and in marketing the product. So those are, those is, uh, those are basically the, the main reasons why I explored onto this and since my, my, my subject last term was ethics and social responsibility with, with sustainability. So I, I think that was a, a perfect timing for me to, you know, match the, the research interest as well as my context in Mindanao and this opportunity to, to explore. That's, that's why I had that. that yeah, time. wonderful. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. McRae, please. Yeah, I think a similar also, I think since uh, both, uh, thank you, Marlo, first of all, for the, for the study, I think uh, when I read your your study, I was also contemplating on uh, the study of uh, Pakraki and Pakfebrian uh, regarding on regarding the resource based view because uh, I think uh, uh, just what I also uh, recommended uh, to the to them earlier, it might be necessary to look or to look into tapping the potential intangible uh, resources of 
of uh, Mindanao Mindanao people uh, to to start to establish these uh, social enterprises because uh, because of the unique uh, the unique uh, challenges that Mindanao is facing. I knew uh, I I believe that Mindanao was able to. Uh, establish its resiliency to overcome these challenges and this uh, untapped intangible resources are the ones that will make social start startups in Mindanao more uh, successful and uh, that, that might be something uh, worth looking into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll definitely consider that in um, future studies. Uh, maybe I will have another run of this kind of study and look into the intangibles aspect as you were actually mentioning about that earlier with the studies of uh, Soraki and Sir Febrian earlier on the intangibles of, uh, of resources. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree to that. No, uh, We really also need, because uh, resources in general, business resources, these are not just you know tangible assets and intangible uh, resources and capabilities. This would uh, probably a, a major factor would also play here, the, the intangible assets. Uh, like, for example, the tradition, and yeah. maybe, uh, well, I have this hunch that um, if, if we look into and explore into the social startups or the social you know, enterprises in Mindanao with, with unique products, I don't know how open they are with regards to innovating this because I, I think that they really put premium to, to the tradition of making that product. So, mm. well, that, that, that is just my hunch. So, Maybe we can validate that um, yes. in, in future studies. Thank you, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. To, to me, what makes this uh, different is the, the social emphasis. You mentioned social startup and social impact, which is um, can be difficult to measure. How do you measure the social impact? Um, well, the social impact has two components here. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the geographic uh, reach and the number of beneficiaries that they have um, mm -hmm. achieved. Okay. So that's based on the... the the works of back in Edelston that I've got. Mm -hmm. um, so they look into the social impact in terms of the geographic coverage and the number of beneficiaries that they are you know, um, addressing. I see, I see. And interestingly, you also uh, connect with the notion of stewardship, do you? And yeah, yeah. I mean, if we, if we see in the literature on social entrepreneurship, they, they usually connect with the notion of altruism or altruistic motifs. And I don't know whether you uh, consider to um, uh, take altruism as part of stewardship or is this uh, a different thing? Stewardship is one thing, but altruism is another thing. What is your view on this? Um, well, I think there are different, really separate constructs if we look into uh, the aspect of culture because stewardship is very clear that they would want to... Uh, uh, highlight cooperation. Okay. Uh, so that, that's why the, the uh, although I'm I'm using the RBV, the resource based view, but specifically the radical RBV, mm -hmm. because the, the the radical RBV puts emphasis on on the notion that there has to be that stewardship culture that would promote cooperation among 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 social startups to really scale uh, the impact. Well, altruism is. Um, it's another um, interesting construct no? that we can use maybe as a proxy to culture later part. So I would also like, I would also like to explore that uh, in, in, in the future studies. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Fabrian, would you like to have some comments? Okay. I think it's uh, interesting research and interesting studies, um, but in the research review, you know, um, this uh, they have a uh, prior or friend concept, you know, about it. Prior or friend value rare. PRI, uh, Sorry. valuable is priority. So, this valuable rare and immutability, this uh, framework, I suppose. Framework yeah. of the research review. Of the resource base, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, there's uh, a concept is to fry your resource. Fry your uh, resources. Yes, yes, fry your okay, resources. Okay. In the J Barney, in the, the first uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, paper. Uh, how, how the uh, social startup 
or the, the, the study uh, look for that? Uh, okay. Um, well, generally, the, the, the concept of um, resource-based view looks into several dimensions of, of resources uh, in terms of maybe social capital, financial capital, um, other resources as well. But this particular study, I, I made use of stakeholder engagement, um, government support, and earned income generation, as well as I, I, I also explored on leadership, just to add to the to the literature, but unfortunately did not uh, elicit a meaningful relationship with uh, SSI. Um, the main reason is that, uh, well, those are the, 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 the three biggest, or not the, the three biggest, but one of the prevalent uh, variables that, being, that are being explored in the literature when it comes to the, to the social enterprises. Um, and then uh, upon contemplating on the context of the so student social startups in Mindanao, I, I think that those uh, variables, specifically stakeholders engagement and income generation, and as well as the government support are really, really um, fit, you know, fit, fitting to, to the context of Mindanao. That's, that's why I, I chose them. But uh, again, the, the RBV lens um, is not limited to those, you know, resources. Uh, we can explore other resources as, as what mentioned by um, Sir Macri earlier, that we can also tap in tangible resources to look into the, the RBV lens. Is there any, any reason you choose the radical? Uh, I think uh, to me, it's new to me, uh, related to, related ah, yeah, to okay. radical resource-based view. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, well, that was the, the, the main reason for choosing the radical RB view because uh, since I'd, I'd like to look into the social component of uh, mm -hmm. the, the social startups, it occurred to me as proposed by Bill and Dick in their uh, article in 2011, that we should be looking at social startups should not be looking into the financial performance of the social mm. enterprises, but look into the other social components, specifically the, the stewardship culture as proposed by, 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 Ed, uh, by, by ba back in Edelstone. That's why I, I chose radical RBV, not just the simple RBV lens. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To fit into the to the social component of the study. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we definitely agree to that. We definitely agree to that because uh, I think uh, with stewardship comes uh, with actually uh, it it uh, comes from the view of uh, having a sense of ownership, and when yes. you have that sense of ownership, then you become good good stewards of your of the resources of your enterprise. And, yes. And uh, with that in mind, I guess. Uh, you actually mentioned about uh, the end of your future research to also look into the uh, mainstream uh, startups and uh, the, the mature startups that uh, you have mentioned. And I think that would also be a nice, uh, an excellent uh, research uh, direction to compare this, compare the view of uh, the view from the perspective of uh, the student startups and the, the mature startups, because that would also uh, measure the, uh, the, the level of the level of uh, maturity of uh, of uh, these people in understanding what uh, the concept of uh, of uh, their understanding of the resource period, the RBV in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely agree. That's why um, I I I put that as in, in the future studies because, well, to be honest, one of the very one of the main limitation limitations of this one is that since this is just a school requirement. Um, yeah. For for yeah. well, we we revise the curriculum now, and the, the BS Entra program implements the the practicum from one semester or five months to a whole year of you know operating the social enterprise if they are uh, choosing the social enterprise. However, once the 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 term ends or the sem ends, um, the sustainability becomes now a problem yeah. because uh, if you, if we look at also the geographic. Uh, you know, components of the students in, in our university, most of them, they are not actually uh, located in one city. Um, they mm -hmm. are geographically dispersed as well. So once mm -hmm. they graduate, they go back to their home provinces somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And so the, the social startup that they have uh, started in, in this particular course, uh, some of them, uh, well, based on our experience, um, well, unfortunate, fortunately, some, some of the students are actually continuing Mm -hmm. uh, these startups, but most of them they actually stopped the operation because mm -hmm. nga, um, most of the, the students they went back to their home provinces. So right, that's right. one of the challenges. That's why I, I put that in the future studies to look into the 
other types of startups, specifically the the mature ones, uh, the, the the big uh, social startups mm-hmm. or the the the, mm-hmm. the big uh, social enterprises. Yeah, yeah. I think the next step would be to take this step up into the yeah. non-academic settings where they yes, are yes, voluntarily. Definitely. Uh, going yes. to the social startups and, and uh, engage with the stakeholders. Definitely, definitely. Okay. All right. Any other thoughts, comments from our audience? It seems yes. to be very peaceful. Yes, please. We still have <laughs> lots of time. Yeah. We look forward yeah. to hear from you. Yeah. Any thoughts on social um, startups, social entrepreneurship? We had previously have on human capital, we have on family business. Any thoughts, comments? I mean, to relate to the stewardship, actually, in family business, also, we have this uh, view as well to relate how uh, family business has a different style of, of uh, management. Right? We usually have these agency problems, right? Mm-hmm. But in, in, the, in the family business, usually, uh, they switch not agency, not agency conflict, but more as a stewardship there because the owner is the, the manager. So they should act on behalf of the, the owner, which I can see that in social enterprise also, um, the stewardship should also be strong. Uh, so yeah, I mean, they are not looking for profits. Well, they, they need profits to, for the operations, but the the end, the ultimate end, is, is more as social benefits. So I, I think I can see it should it should go uh, uh, well with stewardship perspective. Yeah, um, Doctor Raki, I was reminded of the, the the family business that you were mentioning earlier in your mm-hmm. study. Because I also observe, I don't know if, if this particular observation is true mm-hmm. for the, the, the Manila type of family businesses. But back mm-hmm. in Mindanao, uh, I observed that some of the family business, they, they really struggle on the concept of succession, mm-hmm. meaning to say the transgenerational aspect of the family business. Um, the, the, the first generation you know, uh, owners of the family business, especially the parents, they have now troubles of trying to influence their 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 daughters, their sons to continue the business because, as what uh, Sir Macri mentioned earlier in in the series, uh, that the son has a different you know passion. Not it's not culinary. Exactly. He's into photography, something like that. So similar a uh, context is also being observed that in Mindanao. So I don't know if if you you were able to. Um, look into that in your in your in your three cases in, in your study that mm-hmm. the concept of succession or the transgenerational concept of family business. Yeah, and in, in our case, and uh, in, in the three cases also, uh, not all the, the sons or, or the childs, the children are willing to continue. But fortunately, one of them are willing. One of them is willing to continue. So, which creates problem. I mean, in family business, we have inheritance, which has to be divided. And if ownership, if only one person wants to uh, continue the business, then you need to buy out the share from the others, right? Yeah. So that's what, what happened uh, by one of the, one of the case where they passed down the business to one, one of the children. But uh, for the rest of the children who didn't want to continue, they, they, the, the parents kind of giving them their shares. So they don't have any ownership. So it's, 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 uh, it's clean. And yeah, so far it's it's um, at least one we're, we're able, but it is always a risk of continuation of, of uh, succession. It is yeah, it is um, at least in 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 in, in those uh, three cases there, well, a very strong also uh, local culture, meaning that the the we call it uh, primogenitor, uh, where the the father is passing down the business to the, the first son, is also uh, strong. So there is also a strong tradition that you need to follow those uh, values. So even though uh, uh, the the child was not willing, maybe, but they they kind of um, have to take it away anyway as it has to continue. So there's a, a tradition aspect is, is uh, going on there. Maybe in, in other case, maybe in more, more, more modern settings, more uh, democratic settings, the, the child can uh, reject the, the order by the parents. But in those cases, uh, it's still very strong tradition. So they had to abide to the values and the norms. Also, so we call it, uh, you call also the social pressure is, is, is strong. So, yeah. Yes. <laughs> right. Thanks, McRae, for posting on chat. 
yeah. No, just want to encourage everyone. You know, just uh, yeah. please feel free. Yeah, feel no free. Like, uh, uh, like a conversation. Okay, we can we can wait for us maybe five minutes. If uh, everything is clear, then we can uh, leave the breakout room and see which uh, rooms can still we can join if that's okay. Yeah. So let's see. Um, McRae, would I don't know, like, um, do you have any collaborators in, in doing your G GEM research? Uh, no, uh, like, uh, sim similar to Marlo, it was a forced requirement. Uh -huh. So we are forced to <laughs> what, what do our it? previous individual. The course, well, is, my, is, the yeah. course is microeconometrics. Uh, uh -huh. It's really more of the methodology course. So right. the... Uh, so in, on top of the uh, the, the typical econometrics courses that are being studied in the uh, in the in the in the undergrad and graduate levels, mm -hmm. uh, the economic stuff usually has to focus also on uh, on 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 the other on the uh, two specific branches, which are the two major branches, which is micro and uh, macroeconometrics. So this microeconometrics really more deal deal with the. Uh, deal with the uh, large uh, large scale survey data mm -hmm. so we expect that's why uh, our, uh, we are expected to apply uh, methodologies that are useful for analyzing large uh, large survey data because usually the right uh, because uh, somehow the, the the robustness of uh, parameter estimates may not be the same when you're mm -hmm. using when you're using a, a small uh, a small set of uh, a small set of data compared yeah. to the large scale ones mm -hmm. and uh, thus we have to and thus uh, the course usually deals with the uh, with the uh, advanced tools uh, to to uh, ensure that uh, the parameter estimates are basically would uh, reflect likely of the of the of the predicted responses of the those who are those who underwent the survey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. I see. And how how long? Um, how many years you have to finish your PhD? Uh, I hope to finish by this year. I'm this year, okay. writing my dissertation. Yes. Uh, forward. Yes. Uh, just in time because uh, when I was uh, I was telling I think uh, I forgot to tell. Uh, entrepreneurship studies is uh, one of the uh, something that can be that I can I consider exploring now. Uh, my my in my dissertation, I will be tackling. Uh, I will be writing three essays on right. on the economics of digitalization. So it talks about uh, it talks about the the current econ economic issues with respect to the adoption of digitalization, especially na, uh, very timely that now we are in the the new normal, and so. Uh, I wish to see also. I, I wish to investigate also on a, on an economic perspective how businesses are adapt, how uh, what is the economic impact of digitalization, especially in uh, the in the way we do business, especially for especially for uh, for business for new businesses, uh, in education and a lot of topics. So it's actually very broad. Mm -hmm. And uh, my advisor is just asking me to just focus on three, focus on yeah, three, because you need to submit three. You need, you, need to, you, need to sub, you need to submit three papers for your dissertation. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Usually that's the, the challenge of PhD student. You, it's difficult to focus. So many ideas. Yes, yes. Okay, well, how, about, uh, how long uh, okay, will you finish your PhD? I, Marlo, is it Marlo? Marlo? Uh, you're a PhD student too, right? Uh, yeah, yes, yes. Um, well, this this would be my last term for the academic requirements. Okay. So next term, I'll be, you know, doing a lot of meditations and contemplations. <laughs> just to, okay. But initially, I have my my baby research interest, and that is more of academic entrepreneurship. Oh, so I'd like wow. to look into, just... I'd like to look into the, you know, uh, how um, academic entrepreneurship would bring a lot of research um developments and technologies coming from the university mm -hmm. and bring them to commercial markets and make them mm -hmm. available for public use. So that's, mm -hmm. that's my research interest because um, I am part of our uh, university's uh, technology business incubator. All so right. uh, wow. that, that's why I had that kind of you you know, interest. Uh, so yeah. that's why um, most of my research uh, are uh, con conducted for, for my uh, other subjects are actually related to the the 
academic entrepreneurship. That's why for, for this particular study, I made mm-hmm. use of the student social startups mm-hmm. that we are pushing towards our technology business incubators. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. So it's a long way to go, but uh, <laughs> uh, but well, we have no choice. But we have yeah. no choice. <laughs> There's no way back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go yeah, forward. Yeah. Sure. sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We can maybe share our contacts later on, uh, just yeah, to sure, keep sure. Uh, in touch with each other. I think it's, it will be fruitful uh, to collaborate together. Yeah. Okay. So if I see there's no questions from the audience, and uh, I think we achieve at the end of our uh, parallel session, and allow me to give the certificates to each of the presenter. Maybe we start first. I don't know, Richard, which which one? Okay. Yeah. First, uh, we. Convert the certificate to Fabriana Ditya Nugraha for presenting a research paper at the first AUNPE conference on April 16th, 2021. This is signed by Dr. Emelina Sariel, Dr. Eko Suardi, and Dr. Marites Tionko. Fabrian, uh, congratulations. Also, for myself, I don't need to, I think I need to speak on my, my own, my own we can, self. We can read it for you. Okay, please, please, great. <laughs> yeah, so the Certificate of Presentation, uh, AUNB and the Lasalle University is uh, awards the Certificate of Presentation to you, Ms. Uh, Pakraki Atiguna, for presenting a research paper at the first AUNB conference on April 16, 2021, signed Dr. Emilina Sarial, co-chair of the AUNB conference, and Dina Fremont de Losario, College of Business de La Salle University, Dr. Marites Tiongo, co-chair, 2021 AUNB conference, Dean of the School of Economics of de La Salle University, and uh, wait, uh, somebody chatted, and uh, Dr. Ekos Wardi, chairperson of CN University Network for Business and Economics, and Dean of the Faculty of Economics and Business, Universitas Gajamada, Gajamada uh, Indonesia. Thank you, thank you, Mokrei, for conveying the certificate. All right, now my turn. So the AUNPE and the Lasalle University is pleased to confirm the certificate of presentation to Mr. McRainal Lee Pandalipe. Tell me if I'm correctly pronouncing correctly. Pandalipe, is that correct? It's a second. <laughs> it's a different story now. So you can okay. just... Uh... <laughs> McRainal Lee Pandalipe. Uh, oh, McRainal the second Pandalipe. Yes. For presenting a research paper at the first AUNPE conference on April 16, 2021. The certificate is signed by Dr. Elmelina Sariel, a co-chair of 2021 AUNPE conference, also the Dean of Ramon Fidel Rosario, College of Business, Tlaxal University. Dr. Maritas Dionco, co-chair of 2021 AUNB conference, dean of the School of Economics, Tlaxal University, and Dr. Eko Suardi, chairperson of ASEAN University Network for Business and Economics, also the dean of faculty of Economics and Business, Universidad Mada. Thank you. Congratulations, McRae. Thank you, thank you. Terima makasih. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, uh, we confer the certificate of presentation to Marlo Novino, nice. presenting the research paper at the first AUNB conference on April 16, 2021. The certificate is signed by Dr. Emily Nazariel, a co chair of 2021 AUNB conference, also the dean of Ramon V. del Rosario College, College of Business, De La Salle University. Dr. Marites Dionco, co chair of 2021 AUNB conference, also the Dean of the School of Economics, the La Salle University, and Dr. Eko Suadi, Chairperson of ASEAN University Network for Business and Economics, and also the Dean of the Faculty of Economics and Business, Universitas Kajah Mada. Congratulations, Malo. Thank you, thank you, thank right. you. So with this, uh, we come to, uh, the, to the end of our parallel session. Thank you so much, McCray, also Marlo, Fabian, for presenting your work. We hope to see you again uh, in the next AUNP conference so we can uh, have a fruitful discussion of our research. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We can now uh, leave the room and join other rooms that is still available or simply uh, enjoy the, the tune from De La Salle University. Mm-hmm.